I think that it's time someone had the courage to stand up and say the quiet part out loud. Everybody is talking about this storm making a direct hit on Tampa, and that would be catastrophic. But if this storm makes a southward turn and comes across Florida at Fort Myers and then enters into Okeechobee, that region, and then exits out over West Palm Beach, the number of dead in Florida will be somewhere between 10 and 20,000 people. Now, I know that's a big statement, but trust me, they will run out of coffins. They will run out of people to go out and find those who have lost their lives. And this is not overstating the case at all. There would be a great deal of damage up in Tampa, but a lot of those homes, St. Petersburg, Tampa, that area, are very, very well built. Yeah, you're going to have some broken windows. You know, you have some garage doors, maybe a few roofs that, you know, take a tree. But Okeechobee, the Okeechobee region of Florida, is nothing like that. It is a very, very poor area. And a lot of these people think that they are not in any real danger because all of these tracks show it going over Tampa or even farther north. We even have warnings here in Flagler County, which is way, way, way up here. And not that we shouldn't have warnings. But if this storm, instead of hitting Tampa, and everybody goes, oh, whew, that's right. If it goes Sarasota, Fort Myers, it comes in here and it tracks through this region and comes out around Port St. Lucie, West Palm. Port St. Lucie and West Palm will be fine, but right out here in the middle, nobody will survive. They will run out of places to put the, oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. I forgot about FEMA. FEMA's already planned for this. They have all sorts of coffins ready to go. How many of you remember this? I think we can now say with virtual certainty what all of these coffins were for. When you look at what's happened up in the Carolinas, where it's going to take months to find all the dead, and here in Florida, I could easily see that being the case, it being into next year before they're able to recover, if they're even able to recover anyone from this storm. How many of you remember many, many, many years ago, there was a plane crash in the swamp in Florida. There was a football player from Notre Dame that was on the flight and they weren't able to recover anything because it went down in a swamp. Next video, I will get the details from that. It was probably in the late 80s, early 90s when this happened. And because of where the plane went down, they couldn't get to any. It just sunk in a swamp. And a lot of these folks out here in the Okeechobee region, Lake Okeechobee, they live in modest, and that's putting it nicely, homes that won't last five minutes with this storm. Sure glad we have FEMA, though. Whew. Right into the rescue. But as always, gratitude. Thank you, all of you, who have continued to step up and support the Florida Maquis at the Patreon channel. I'm sorry if I sound a little tired, maybe I'm a little punchy. Spent 12 hours today out cutting plywood and boarding up homes and boarding up windows and tearing out all the prepper survival gear and testing equipment and getting everything squared away, and I am beat. I am absolutely exhausted, but I had to get something up for you guys today because it wouldn't be possible to do what I'm doing without you guys. Brigade commanders, unit commanders, need to know level, even you folks down at the base level, everybody's pitching in, everybody's stepping up. God bless all of you. If you'd like to join us, the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, it's only one US dollar per month at the base level. Hundreds and hundreds of never before seen videos. There's a $5 level, handful of videos. We just did our inaugural uh, brigade and unit commanders briefings for the $10 and $15 level. Those will be coming soon. Given the seriousness of the situation, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to upload videos. We are, of course, going to inevitably lose power, lose internet. For how long is the big question. They're not going to believe what they see after the storm moves through. 
we already have right now on the ground enough standing rain so that there's puddles everywhere. All of the swales are already full. They've drained and pumped out the canals to the best of their ability, but it rained today. Again. And there's standing water, and we haven't really gotten anything of the storm. And I'm talking to them, I'm in the east coast of Florida. They will not be able to find the people. It is not overstating the case. I'm going to call it right now. They're talking about staging power trucks and staging... There's nothing you can do when huge cities are standing in three to five feet of water and the water isn't going anywhere anytime soon. There's nothing you can do. You can't fix anything. You can't clear any roads. You sure as heck can't work with electrical. And that's just going to take time. And it's going to sit there and cook and cook in the Florida sun. It's going to be unbelievable. And that's just probably not a good enough word. They will run out. They will run out of places to put the bodies. They will be running out of people to go find the bodies. 10 to 20,000. See, what a lot of people don't get about winds like this is you can have the most unbelievably reinforced building to be sheltering in meant to handle a Category 5 hurricane, the wind. But to quote the immortal Ron White, comedian, he actually did a skit on this, and it was about a hurricane in Florida. That There was some guy who thought he was going to ride it out because of uh, his ability to work out and be in shape. And I'm paraphrasing the comedy routine here. And he said, it's not that the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. A 100-mile-an-hour hurricane wind has the ability easily to pick up a Grand Wagoneer full of fuel, pick it up 100 feet in the air, and slam it into a fifth-floor window of even the most heavily reinforced building. That ain't going to work. You're going to have 20 gallons of fuel on board moving 100 miles an hour, and when that thing explodes... When it hits the side of that building behind that hurricane wind, that's over for that entire floor of that building. There's no building designed to withstand that level of a missile. And that's actually, it was you know partially how they taught us when we were driving way back in the day when they actually taught people to drive safely. That we were all driving missiles. Giant, steel-framed missiles with explosives on board moving at a ridiculous rate of speed. That's what a lot of these people don't get about. It's not just the wind that is blowing against your house. If the wind has picked up a Range Rover and it's screaming at you at 100, 110 miles an hour and it slams into your house, I don't care what your house is made of. I really don't because it's going to go boom. And when it goes boom, that's going to be that. What if it's a tanker truck? That's going to be the issue. They keep showing this track going over tan. Like I said, not saying that wouldn't be catastrophic. That wouldn't be horrible. But if this track moves south, for me personally, I'm up on the northeast coast of Florida, up Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Palm Coast, Flagler County up here, we're going to have our own issues, but nothing like what they're going to deal with. If it moves south, it'd be better for us, but it would be much more deadly. Because this part of South Florida down here, out here in the middle, is the homes are just not built like they're built other places. It's a very um, modest area. Poor area. I'll just say it's poor area. 165 mile an hour sustained winds. Nothing. Nothing is going to stand up against that. We were talking about that today, boarding the stuff up. And like, you know, not sure if it's going to make that much of a difference, you know, if cars start getting picked up and slammed into houses. You know, if you have Visqueen and you have tarps, you know, set, if something falls and slams into your roof and there's a hole and you got to keep the water out or you got to go to neighbors because of that, 
you know, that's one thing. But this kind of power, this kind of power is just uh, just unreal. And I listened to Sheriff Staley from here in Flagler County. Um, you can hear it in the tone of his voice. And we're way over here on the northeast coast. We're about as far away as you can get. I mean, maybe maybe the west panhandle might be you know safer than we are, but that storm's going to have to go through the entire state of Florida before it gets to us. And even here, even here we have evacuations going on. This is my fear. Not a hundred, not fifteen hundred, somewhere between ten and twenty thousand. If this thing swings south, so I will leave it there. Like I said, it's not going to be great anywhere. We have all these power plants: Daytona Beach, Orlando, Kissimmee, the Villages, Tampa, all very heavily populated area. But a lot of these people over here is going to be by by this time tomorrow is going to be a ghost town. There's going to be nobody in Clearwater, nobody in Sarasota, St. Pete, Tampa. You should see the highways. Even over here, some some people actually took the four out out and took it all through Orlando and came up the, the traffic from Daytona Beach to up the 95 to Jacksonville is bumper to bumper, even way over here. So many people are leaving. It's going to be a ghost town. But nobody's talking about... Naples, Fort Myers, Okeechobee, these areas in here, Pahokee, Lakeport, Indian Town, Belle Glade, LaBelle. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people out here that think this storm is going to go up here. If this thing swings south and comes through here and comes out like West Palm, where Mar-a-Lago is, by the way, just saying, you're going to see something unreal, absolutely unreal. Not not weeks for power, months. Months made a bunch of different uh, provisions today, I'm not going to get into the details, that um, never made before. And got together with a neighbor, him and I are both former military, and we put our heads together, and we've... Uh, War game to plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. You know, how long is this going to last? Got down to the nitty gritty, the how much fuel, how much a day for this, how much a week for that. You know, what were, where would we go? What would we do? Fall back, all this stuff. This is going to be unlike any, any other. Oh, thanks. Golly, thank you, FEMA. Thank you, FEMA. Man. For being ready to just scoop up the dead. Unreal. At least at least we know. But I'll leave it there before I say something that'll get me uh, destroyed here on YouTube. But that's why we have the Patreon channel. <coughs> Pardon me. If you'd like to join us, only a dollar. Got a little QR code up there on the right hand side of the screen. Scan that and take you right where you need to go. And here's the best part. Best part. If it's not for you, and it isn't for everybody. But if it's not for you, you sign up. You've got until next year. You got 90 days. It's only 30 days ish to the election, isn't it? Something like that, about a month. You've got that, and then you've got till December, and then you've got through January. And you can look at all the videos. And if it's not for you, you can come back and say, Florida Monkey, I gave you a chance, brother. I gave you a chance, and it's just it's just too much. I'm not can I have my money back? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the rule. So God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for those in the direct path of this. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.